Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Gig Apps Exposed here on YouTube and um, wanted to jump into another comment video for the subscribers and listeners. So it's happy Saturday, I guess. Uh, it's the weekend, a couple of days after Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. And uh, let's just jump right into the comments, shall we? Uh, this comes from Larry Thomas. I used to, there used to be a good basketball player named Larry Thomas, I believe. Or was that the guy that made the English muffins? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> let's see. Absolutely not. It's way past its prime now. Um I don't. I can't remember what that was in regards to, um, but uh, thank you for your comment, Larry. Uh, let's see, Tim Slaughter. How are you, Tim? Nice to see you, brother. Says uh, he says the interesting thing with the big so-called DoorDash sponsored channels is that they have been doing <clears throat> a little more DoorDash bashing these days. Nothing hard slamming like you, Brian. But when when Kim, I. I <laughs> I suck tiny shoe balls as a side dish money <laughs> money plan start chirping up something is going on <laughs> oh I love you Tim man you're a funny man <laughs> that was a good one um hey man sometimes you got to be harsh on on some of these people you know to get the message out because especially if they are screwing the, the um, you know, the community over. Now, interestingly enough, you mentioned Bree, right? Uh, I think, yeah, was it Bree you mentioned? No, you mentioned Kim. But Bree started doing uh, commercials, <laughs> ones to sell, uh, you know, power, power uh, systems, you know, like uh, electrical uh, portable power or whatever. I, I kind of found that, find that funny. That some of these channels, because what happens is when these channels, when I had a big channel way, way back when I was doing um, gaming and stuff, I always got offers from different companies that said, hey, could you uh, do a product review? And, you know, I mean, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. I mean, you know, but it's it's just crazy. Like they're into everything and they don't even care. That's why like the payday loan stuff that these channels are doing, which is really fraudulent activity. I mean especially by the companies and that these companies are being allowed to, uh, to infiltrate, uh, every day Americans, you know, to, to ruin their lives with, with these loans. But when they get into that, they, they, they don't even use that service themselves. They push it on everyone else just because they're getting kickbacks and that's wrong. It's just totally wrong. But anyways, yeah. And Kim, Kim's into it too. So let's see. Tim also says, how about these dudes helping, uh, oh, scalping 60 hours knowing they're being ripped off by the entire time? I know we go back and forth about these companies getting away with bloody murder, but these workers know, know the deal. They don't give an F. They're telling us flat out. Yeah, I mean, basically, um, you know, like I did ride share a lot, um, I had uh, over 60, I think I had 6,500 deliveries on, uh, I'm sorry, uh, ride shares on Lyft and a few thousand on um, on Uber with ride shares. So, I mean, I, I took a lot of passengers, you know what I mean? And it's given me a notification to start my shift in uh, another half hour. So I'm going to keep this comment video to a half hour. But, uh, yeah, no, I get it, you know, but it's, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, if these companies weren't doing anything wrong or ripping the drivers off, why did they pay out a $328 million dollar settlement to New York people? They should have did that across the board for everyone. You know what I mean? That should have been dispersed amongst all the drivers, <clears throat> you know? So, I mean, it's funny because I work, I mean, I'm, I have all of these different apps I'm on that I've worked and it's like, no matter what company is doing what they, they're all stealing from you. So <laughs> we should be included in all of these class action suits that, I, that, you know, that are paying out. 
Thanks for your uh, comments, Tim. Haven't heard from you in a while, but thanks for stopping by. Larry510 says, absolutely. Okay, this is, yeah, okay. I already read this. Sorry. Uh, let's see. J. Reg says, I watched the original video a few days ago, and she is spot on. They are paying these politicians very well to turn a blind eye. That's why nothing's changed, especially in Massachusetts, because at one time they were setting some regulations, then it just disappeared. Yeah, you're talking about um, Proposition 22, but Proposition 22 is terrible, even if it got passed in Massachusetts. And I don't think it did pass. I, I, I don't think it, it got passed through at all, because I think I think. Um, you know, the drivers found out that they were only going to get dash time out of it. Uh, I mean, uh, active time and not get paid for dash time. We, we, the driver, if they're going to get, if we're going to get paid minimum wage, we should be getting it from the time we turn the app on to the time we turn it off. But there's also other problems with that because if you're on the clock and they send you, you know, an order you don't like and you, you decline it, you're allowed to decline one per hour from what I'm heard, right? But then, if you if you decline another one, they they just end your dash. But you you do have a chance to go back on, um, uh, you know, by pay per, pay per order, you know, because I've been talking to Mister Corinthians because um, he lives in Minnesota, and he does dash um, he does earn by time all the time. But the thing is, is uh, they send you like really really far distances, and that is just insane because the more miles you put on your car the more you're destroying your car the more wear and tear on your car that you eventually have to pay out in in repairs and that's a big part of it and this is this is why uber can get away with all of this because i mean in doordash because they don't have to flip the bill for any of it see if we were making minimum wage but we were able to use their cars if they offered them like and we and they paid for the gas. We, I'd do it all day long, but that's not the case, is it? But think about it. Um, you, if you go to a minimum wage job, say at Walmart or something like that, bagging groceries or whatever it is, the only the only good thing about it is that you might only you might be very close to the job, and you only have to go 10, 15 minutes down the street. You park your car, and you're inside, and you're working. But remember, you still got to pay the taxes and all of that stuff. It's all it's all it's just a really bad collusion with these companies and these corporations are all part of those those apps because you can tie back you know Walmart Spark goes to Walmart uh, Target goes to uh, the shipped app uh, Roadie is part of UPS you see how it's all tied into these big corporations but boy they they really pulled a fast one on the drivers you know and then like it's really hard because a lot of these politicians have sold out and they won't they won't do anything about it but we can still change that we can get these people out of office vote them out or throw them out you know <laughs> anyways thanks jay reg uh tim slaughter says i like local news style investigative report by the main lady uh nothing new here unfortunately but exposure is exposure yeah that see that's the thing tim when I found this that video from Uber Jeep Arizona and Je uh, Jeff Thomas Black, and the thing was is I really liked how it was put together. Um, you know, I mean, I never watched the whole thing. I only watched a minute of it, and I never watched the rest. But when I saw it, when I, you know, as I was doing it, I realized how good of a report it was, and it was on a really large channel. So that channel is probably the largest on YouTube that covers workers you know rights and everything you know more more perfect union that channel right and so she's she she was spot on and so wasn't the the drivers to you know and i get it but it, exposure is a big thing because the 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 news media hardly ever covers any of that stuff uh let's see uh my concern is the girl who's gonna make money off the app she creates and sells to go after mr evil uber dare dare you cash Oh, sh shamey, shammy, uh, she, she gives three reasons for lack of transparency. Hmm. One reason, babe, just one, to hide the effing theft. Ah, right, because 
Yeah, I, I get it. Uh, let's see. But she says it's probably too expensive for Uber to have. Oh, that you're talking about the girl, the lady when they were into. Yeah, that that was bullshit. Like that. That's the whole thing. It's like, see, that's why I critiqued it, because I put my own two cents into it. And I and I said, yeah, I mean, she's she's obviously not exposing the fact that that they're, they're thieves. Right. Um, and then he's Tim says, are you effing kidding me? Or maybe they just don't know the bottom line. Uh, what the what the f? Look, Brian. Thanks for posting this. I get I get it, but we should be more concerned after watching this nonsense. No, I I get it, but like like you said and like I said about the exposure, I think it's a good thing that I mean that channel. I think what did it get like a half million views or something on that video? I'm pretty sure, but I mean, and then think about all the the shares and the reposts of that. At least it brings awareness to people and drivers and to you know when is people when are people going to get upset enough to to do something about it right we all we're all in it together right but uh, you know things have gone really really far gone right now it's going to be real tough let's see steve arrow it's all downhill from here yeah that's what i was it's funny you say that because unfortunately that's that's how i kind of feel but i'm still up optimistic to try to help you know what i mean i mean what can we do we got to do something i mean but i hope you guys got motivated with with the 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 speech from the hot that i gave in that video because it you know i mean i'm not going to stop doing things on, my, on one or two of my days off i might i'm going to go to the state house myself and stand there with signs and and walk in and talk to representatives i mean what other choice do we have you know and then what I'll tell them is if you don't if you don't help us and pass these laws, we're just going to vote you out of office. I have no problem telling a politician that we're going to vote you out of office. <laughs> you know, let's see. Uh, Brenta Cosmaximum says it's not just the pathet pathetic amount they pay us. They pay. It's the amount of money in oil, gas, gas changes basic maintenance. No, I totally agree with you. Worst of all, the depreciation and value of your vehicle due to a ma massive mileage. Yep. Yep, absolutely. Um, let's see. RD says the depreciation and value is going to blindside many people in the year, in the near future. I'm driving a 06 model year four cylinder, so I'm not too worried. I see most people using late model driving cra uh, crazy miles. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, I have an uh, an 05, you know, eight cylinder type car, like a Marquis, and it's, I get 20 miles to the gallon. The only good thing, the only good news to report out of that is the gas prices have come way down. I can get gas now at uh, BJ's Wholesale Club for about 270, and I've seen, and I got it today for, what was it, three, um, 307? 307 and that's the cheapest i've seen it H have you seen it come down in your area folks let me know in the comments gary pierce says i've been doing delivery full time since early 2017 i now have 10 apps and can't make it anymore for my family oh th this is an interesting thank you so much gary pierce i hope you come back to this channel because it's people like you that i really uh care about like when I hear this, it saddens me. You know what I mean? I mean, all of you, I love every, each and every one of you who are subbed to this channel, the real people who actually care about people. This is a, this is sad here. Let's see. I now have 10 apps and I can't make it anymore for my family. It's no longer sustainable. Yeah. That's the thing. The sustainable sustainability part of gig apps has gone out the window and that, and remember folks, the thing that you have to remember is this whole scenario the whole thing we're going through was was a plan by the world economic forum going way back to the united nations going into the agenda 2030 i know that sounds weird for some new people maybe listen like what the hell is agenda you, some of you may say what is that unless you research and then know about it you'll never know right so it was a plan and it's that's only like part of the plan that's the transportation part there's, they, they cut them up into sectors, medical, finance, agriculture, transportation, um, you know, there's many sectors. And the sector of transportation 
was to control and take it over. So they had all control of everything and they're controlling everyone through the apps. So the sustainability is gone. So he says, it used to be great. I made 2,200 a week in just, just on Grubhub. I believe it back then or, or whatever. I, yep, I believe it. I barely make 300 all apps combined in seven days. Oh, wow. Wow. That's bad. Uh, it's a joke. I'm discouraged and stressed every day because I I have a family and others really, I'm, I'm sorry, and orders really come. And when they do, it's DoorDash 2 and $3, uh, then an hour later, another $2 offer. How are we supposed to live on that? Well, see, that's the whole thing is they don't want you to live on that. They, they These powers that be want everyone in an impoverished, controlled state so they can control everyone. And when they crash that dollar in the near future, when it finally crashes and you go to the store and you can't buy anything or the it's, you know, when you're not going to be able to pass cash, they want to get everyone into digital dollars. And, uh, you know, that leads into Revelation 13 in the Bible, by the way. If you haven't picked up your Bible in a while, folks, you better start reading it in the back of the Bible, but I would, I would start with uh, page one, <laughs> but I'd go to Revelation and check it out. Anyways, um, he says, I've held on a long time hoping it will turn around. It's, I'm sorry to tell you, Gary, but it's, it's definitely not going to turn around. I mean, it's not, but it's only getting worse and it has been since 2020. I've lost hope and I can't take the stress anymore looking for other income. Sad to say, but I believe the good old days are forever gone. You're absolutely right, Gary, 100%. Orders just don't come anymore uh, on any of the apps, and it's few It's few that do come and pay 2 and $5 when they used to pay average of 13 to 30 I know, isn't it? Isn't it crazy? Driver saturation is a big part of the problem. I don't believe it's on, the only reason, but it's a big one. Wow, this was... Uh, this was a wake up call, even, you know, even for all of us, like to, to hear that. I, I'm, I'm so s sorry to hear all of that. I mean, I'm barely like hanging in there myself, you know, and um, I think a lot of us are. But <clears throat> but I found another zone that was busy. Now, here's another thing, Gary, if you could write, if you come back to this video, could you let me know what market you're in? Like what state at least or city? And do you, and is it city? Are you in a rural? Are you in a suburban area? See, a lot of times people will post this, but it's nice to know the demographics so we can get a pinpoint on if it's, if it's the rural area, because rural areas and places that you have to drive long distance are terrible. Um, it just is. Um, and I'm caught in between some of that, but I found another zone to go, but I'm, I'm not making great money. I'm just, I'm get, making survival money, survival money. Let's see. Um, media media soundbite says that happens. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the channel, by the way. That happens to me. One time, the customer asked me how much they're gonna pay to drop me off, and I told them, I told him they they're gonna offer me twenty bucks, and he said that they charge me about eighty. Oh wow, eighty for the ride. He said if I can sell you fifty. And I can cancel the ride. Would you take me? Oh, wow. And let me tell you something. Uh, you know, I, I'm not even ashamed to say that I have done that before, folks. That when you're in the car, right? I mean, you you know, if if Uber ever finds out about it or any of them, you know, and they find out who, yeah, they could deactivate you. But here's the thing. I did that a couple of times. Like when, when I had a conversation with a customer and... You got to have that conversation kind of at the beginning of the ride, because if you go too far into the ride, you know, the can't, I mean, canceling thing, the canceling thing is cool because then that person can, can cash app you or, Zelle, or send it to your Zelle or PayPal. And a friend of mine who does ride share, he was building up clients, people who were taking, you know, Ubers pretty much every day. And he would set up a client list and eventually he, he, used uber very rarely and he just used his car to pick up you know drive you know customers and this charge him a flat rate because they the, the customers are getting ripped off but the drivers are too because we are only getting 20 percent of that of of the 80 bucks that's crazy and that's what that girl said in the video 
she paid ninety dollars, and that driver probably only got about twenty five bucks out of the ninety. Terrible. Thank you for coming to the channel here, Media Soundbites. Truth Wars TV. Hey, nice to see you, man. He says one of the biggest problems is all the illegals who are driving for these companies. They do not understand the system and they take all kinds of very low paying orders. It's interesting you say that because Uber Jeep AZ, big shout out to Jeff if you're listening to this. He did a he did an awesome video on um on immig on immigrants and I did one I did part of his video plus I I showed you guys uh Patriot Nurse and I went over that and I critiqued it and he he really comes up with he, he's just aces on that. I mean, he was so spot on. You might want to go over to Uber Jeep, Uber Jeep AZ channel and check out. It was probably about five or six uh, days or a week ago he had that video out. Uh, talks all about that. And you're right. <clears throat> and that's part of the plan, too, to bring in more immigrants to do this type of work. And it's funny because they don't even really vet them out. They just allow a lot of these immigrants to get on. I don't know how they do it, but... It's crazy. Let's see. Um, Paper Chase 83 says it will never be what it was. Yep, I agree with you. Welcome to the channel. <clears throat> Greg says, hell no. Um, let's see. <clears throat> pepperoni. Hey, pepperoni. I never, let's see. I never understood where there was margin for profit on $5 of food. Yeah, there is none. I mean, think about it too. Like if you even take one, let's say it says five twenty five going 2.3 miles, right? And we've we've taken them, right? We, a lot of, well, I mean, I can admit that I have taken them because especially if it's so slow and there's nothing coming out, right? You're, you're forced to like take something or get nothing, right? But then you could be sitting at a restaurant or a place for 10, 15, 20 minutes and then, then you take it and it's like, what did you really do it for? You work, you work, we're working for peanuts. So let me see what else he says here. It is a flawed business model. Let's be honest. It makes sense if you have a bicycle or a moped, but maybe it isn't. This isn't for adults, but for teenagers with 1997 Civics looking for bear money. I think that no, no, it's I mean, I don't agree with you on that. It, it's I get what you're saying. But that's like throwing your hands in the air and saying, oh, well, there's nothing we can do about it. We need to band together, folks. We need to try to help fight against this stuff. And the only way to do it is to get active. You, you, these politicians are not going to change anything unless you go after them to make changes. Because at this point, the companies are, are just running buckshot over the drivers and they're able to do anything they want. So it's either we do something or we just grin, bear, and take it. You know what I mean? Uh, let's see. But maybe this isn't for adults, but for teenagers, 1999 Civics looking for bear money. I think the taxi cab Uber model is profitable, and I hope more competition brings down the price. But see, that that's, that's not the answer either, bringing down the price. The problem is, is that because of Agenda 2030, and I keep going back to that, and for, and for any new drivers here that are uh, don't understand what agenda 2030 is it was a plan that was put together back in 1991 at the um un sustainable goals summit at the united nations right and they put together this this action plan for agenda 21 and they wanted to implement all of these crazy things that they're trying to do now <clears throat> and they couldn't get it done by 2021 so then they changed it to agenda 2030 it's called sustainable development going green, uh, you know, green new deal, all of these terms you hear, it's all part of that, right? And they're trying to force drivers to get into electric cars and not even have gas powered motors, right? Because they want to bring the, the carbon emissions down. And that comes into carbon credits, digital credits that they want you to have. Over in China, they're running that whole scam on, on because it's communist over there. They're running the entire scam on all those citizens. And if you have a bad credit score, you can't even go to the store and buy a loaf of bread. It's insane. And that's what they, they want, a global version of China. The, the model is, is China for, for America and a global version of Nazi Germany, as, as crazy as it sounds. I mean, I've done a lot of historical research, folks. You know, some of you can choose to believe it or disagree or not believe it. But when it comes and it's here and staring in your face, uh, you'll, 
you'll you'll say, geez, maybe I should have done something about it when I had the chance, right? And it all ties into the Bible and all that. But anyways, I don't believe in dropping the prices and having competition in because the ta- they did that to the taxi cabs. The taxi cabs, when I drove a taxi, I made more money in the 1990s than I did ever on the, on the gig apps. They, it was three times better money or at least two times better money on, in the taxis when I was driving. Now, was it all peachy keen and great every time? No, you had people that would stiff you and not give you a tip and whatever, but they were forced to either show their hand because you were they were in the car with you and they had to go into their pocket and pull out cash to give you a tip or not give you one. And they look like idiots if they didn't, <laughs> you know. But anyways, let's see. Um, let's see. I think taxi cab Uber model is profitable and hope the competition brings down the price. But the food delivery has failed a failed model, in my opinion, especially if food keeps going up in price, it's getting very, in the, see, okay, let's, that's a good point, pepperoni, because I, I did many video talks on this, you guys know, even in comment videos, I mentioned it, when the price of food becomes so expensive that even people that are buying food in the stores, are ha- you know, like, in other words, food in stores is now rivaling what, almost what a restaurant is charging, But of course, the restaurants are going up in price too. Like, there's a high-end Italian restaurant that I have gone into before, and they charge like $25 for for spaghetti and meatballs, right? It's insane. It's probably even higher than that now. That that same meal would would have cost you only like three years ago, like eight, nine, ten bucks if you if if you were lucky. Now everything's like two and three times more, and it's and it's getting worse. So at what point do people say, I'm not going to order from DoorDash because DoorDash is two and three times higher than that. So <laughs> the, the, the rich people, people who have a lot of money and stuff right now, like even cash, like hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, that's not the, affecting them. Okay. But, but the welfare people and the people who are, you know, low income and all that, and God bless them all, but they, they're using the apps when they shouldn't even be doing it. Like they're using part of their, their monthly income that comes in when they should be buying food and cooking it at home and not, not ordering out because what they do is they end up not leaving a very good tip because they're paying all these high prices in the app that, that DoorDash is charging them and Uber is charging them and they're stiffing the drivers. So then we have the companies who are not giving us a prop, even a proper base pay. So that, you know what I mean? That's why you're seeing a lot of these two twenty five, two dollars and three cents and this crazy things on the Uber app. Like Uber is just a joke in my area. I, I get like one order per week or every other week. If I'm lucky to, to take, cause all the rest of them all suck. Let's see. Um, good com. Good comment, by the way. Let's see. Pepperoni says, I love this channel. I like watching it a lot. Thank you so much. And um, I'm going to say glad to hear it. And I hope you come back. Uh, let's see. P- Pathmaker, T- Pathmaker TV says, transparency is good and all, but I would rather they just stop stealing our money. Uh, you know, I absolutely agree with you. But how, how do we stop an algorithm that's programmed to do it? Like, you know, they, DoorDash will never take, admit that they're programming the algorithm with the engineers to rip us off. But when they, if they get caught and we were able to like open up the books and see what they were actually doing and then force them through law. Well, first of all, companies like that shouldn't even be around. We should get rid of DoorDash and get a, 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 a app that's for drivers and, and about drivers. In other words, it, it, you know, maybe people could just pool their resources together and, uh, form a new, you know, a new app, but the powers that be will never let that happen. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's almost, it is almost too late, unfortunately, but we got it. I got to keep trying. I'm not giving up. Let me see. Uh, yeah, Pathmaker says, Weff, you will own nothing and be happy. Yeah, that's a Klaus Schwab, uh, that piece of garbage. That's that's what he says. Uh, RD says, a few weeks ago, I was offered a $3 stack delivery order, 
laughing my ass off. Yeah, imagine that. Three dollars stacked. Let's see. Truth Wars says what it really what really is sad is it's becoming very common. Yep. RD says it's gotten to the point where it's actually more expensive for the customer to pick up his or her own order using their own car, taxi, or public transit when when we get offered three dollars. In other words, they would why would a customer pick it up when they can pay a suck of three dollars to do that for them i know i know isn't it crazy you're absolutely right you're absolutely right rd time to wake up says charging passengers thirty dollars for a six mile ride and paying drivers 750 we are living in some wild times folks decline and recline <laughs> yep i mean here's the thing too like the only reason most drivers on delivery or for DoorDash, do the the uh, Dash Dash Now feature, you know, to get Dash Now is is for just that reason. In other words, even when you decline, I I don't care what anyone says. They'll say, oh well, if you don't keep a high acceptance acceptance rate, you won't get any good orders, and that's not true. I get good orders still, but I don't get them like constantly, frequently. But I still get them, and I'm in the large order program. If I wasn't in that large order program, I probably would be fully screwed. I wouldn't even be able to keep my head above water, you know? Let's see, uh, Florida, how you doing, Mark? Florida Mark says, these comments, comment videos are great. Yeah, these content creators' videos are deceiving, and they will edit their content to make it look good. They never show what they're actually making in real time, plus every market's different. Yep. They never, that's right, they never do, Mark. It's crazy, right? Let's see. But but billions or B, but KT billions. I swear this is the best channel on YouTube. I love how I love how you are exposing these gig tubers, laughing my ass off. I love it. Uh, can you expose Bentley? <laughs> can you expose Bentley Coop? I know you did a vid, but can you do an updated vid? Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I rotate the uh, the videos around. I do new ones and everything. I've done plenty on Bentley Coop. Um, matter of fact, on my DoorDash Sucks channel that's going to be up um, after the first week in December because I'm changing the name to a different name, and I'll let you guys know on this channel what it is. And I have another channel called DoorDash Gig Economy Police. Make sure you go over and sub to me over there. But, yeah, I mean, look, the fact is if no, if someone's got to call them out, for the bullshit and the lies that they're putting on the, on the drivers and in the community. And, you know, a big shout out to you, Torp. Okay. You did a video recently and, uh, you addressed some things and I disagree with you on a couple of those levels. I think that we still need to talk about the problems because there's a lot of censorship going on out there. And that's why I continue to do videos and rehash things because more people can try to, to find the material and we have to share these videos and talk about the problems to try to fix them because if we don't try to fix them nothing nothing will ever change right so anyways love you brother talk but i don't always agree with you 100 percent. but I, I mean you're in the wheelhouse man you know i love you uh let's see uh let's see den dena gardner dina gardner says are you okay with me sharing your videos on my Facebook page? Always like to... Oh, absolutely. Listen, Dina, if you want to... Uh, uh, if you want to do that, I mean, no sweat. I, definitely. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to put yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You can even... down. You can download my stuff. You can use any any videos you want. Absolutely. Totally free. I'm not, I, I wouldn't... I'm not going to... There's no copyrights. For, I won't go after you for that. Use them. I want you to educate the audience. I want you to let people know. This is about helping the community. I don't make any money on any of the videos I do, folks. I do them for free. I do this because I love all of you. I'm trying I'm trying to help. So, yeah, Dina, absolutely. Go right ahead. Um, let's see. Uh, G, let's see. Leap Coin Industry says not only... Do they screw over and rip off the drivers? They also do it to the restaurants. Oh, yeah, that's true. The pizza shop I worked at constantly gets undercharged by them, 
And DoorDash Park gets the difference. Yep, absolutely. They, they take up to as much as 50% uh, of the profit from these, from these restaurants, too. Lil Pope, how are you? Uh, nice to see you. Uh, it says, uh, I just want to know that Earn By Time just, I'm, I'm sorry, I just want you to know that Earn By Time has just hit my market and every order that I got was a no tip or low tip order. Yep. Uh, talk uh, Talking about a dollar tip, they are prepping us to be employees, but without benefits. Well, that's true. But we're not, even when we are, we're not really employees because they, if they make, if they try to make the drivers employees, like real ones, they're going to have to pay benefits. They're going to have to give insurance and everything else. And, and if they do that, we all need to band together and, and go and sue them in court. I mean, we should be suing them constantly for all of the, the stuff they're doing. It's just ridiculous what's going on. We need to change the laws too. But, um, yeah, my, my uh, Mr. Corinthians has been doing Earn by Time for a long time. And when you do Earn by Time, the algorithm picks the low tip and no tip orders to send you. They're not going to send you any high orders and stuff. But what sucks is you're only getting paid for active time. You're not getting you're not getting um, uh, the the dash time. That's what sucks about it. Let's see. And and Ray y- Yasudin. Says if it happened, I will contact Rideshare Professor and make and file a small claims court thing. I'm almost done here, folks, because I gotta start dashing. But I wanted to do some more um, comments. Let's see. Deliver free Nana says I find that laughable that it's not that hard to keep a high completion rate. You have you have to do. Let's see. You have to do a that last week of the month. I guess. I guess, but what what you will take is a lot of crap to get over the 50% where I am. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Let's see, Legend Legend Valley says, uh, completion rate is easy. I think there's some people not completing the runs they get. Well, listen, I can tell you, how I, I unassign a whole lot of orders that are just insane. Let's see, Jesse Spencer says, I got that email on, on one point. It's total bullshit. In the other hand, it's it's vetting the dashes. Yeah, this talking about the completion rate. D Blaze says there is there is a way to master the acceptance rate. What I usually do is take one to two mile offers for three bucks to four bucks by being in a food plaza area where the restaurants are close and nearby the mall. I do mostly in the daytime to maintain my acceptance rate, which goes up at times. But yeah, but what happens if they send you a long distance one? And the big orders randomly sometimes come in. If it's busy in the hotspot area, I never take trash offers at night. It's not worth it. And plus, even if I decline certain bad offers, the acceptance rate is fine. On the work I did by maintaining it around dinner time, they are sending out big offers when it's very busy. I hope I hope you become a top dasher, Brian, because you'll definitely get high priority orders and dash whenever you want. And some months are definitely going to be busy. Oh yeah, Brian, you ever thought about making a Rumble page? I heard a lot of good things with posting videos and you wouldn't have a problem like many have with YouTube. Plus, you could gain a lot more subscribers on here to follow you and make good money. See, I'm I'm not doing it for the money though, Blaze. I don't I'm not monetized. I'm not, I'm never going to monetize. If I had 50 trillion people on my web on my, on my pages, I wouldn't ask for one dime. I don't t- I don't collect any money. It's not about that. But I appreciate that. And now let me address something. I am all over on BitChute, you know, folks. I have a channel called Waking Up the Sheep. So if you go to bitshoot.com and you go to the search bar and you put waking and you space, every word is spaced, okay? So waking up the sheep, Okay you'll find me. And then on waking up the sheep, there's a little link that you can click on that goes to my waking up the sheep two page. Now I haven't posted over in a year and a half on both of those pages, but there's a lot of videos on there that would explain a lot to you about what's actually going on in another way. Um, you know what I mean? You could tie in the stuff to what's going on in the world over there and tie it into the gig economy. 
And yes, I have thought of doing a Rumble page, uh, and I may do that because YouTube, in in essence, is really dead for people who are telling the truth, because they they're t- they're suppressing the truthers. They're suppressing people that want to help and tell the truth. They're they're promoting all of the scumbags and all of the thieves and the liars and the manipulators, like Pedro, like Bree, like Hannibal, like Kim Side Money Plans, like Zach like uh, Trevor's Deliveries, all the bad channels for the gig space, they're, they're just rotten because all they care about is themselves. They don't care about any of you. And I care about you. And I always have. And I've remained on this mission ever since I started this channel in, in 2021 of September of 2021. So, um, and actually this is my second channel, but my original channel, that's when that started. And then within six months or a year, I, I, did this channel, but I keep these three channels as backups in case anything ever goes wrong or you can't find me. So at least you have another way to find me over there. Now I don't post over there right now, but there's a lot of information you might want to watch. Some things you may not agree with, but there's a lot of knowledge on, on my channel. I did, I did that for two years, folks, before I even came onto YouTube for the gig work. I was, I was on, I was on YouTube ever since 2015. I was a gamer back in the day, but I gave it all up, gave it all up for God, folks, and to do the right thing, you know. So anyways, Damien, thanks for your comment here. I want to thank everyone else who came to uh, the channel for the comments, to make comments, and I will be doing another comment video. I have to catch up on all of these comments, and I'm I'm really happy to see now I'm over a 1,000 subscribers. Uh I've gone from 970 to 1,044, and I appreciate all the new people here. So just know that I'm trying to help you all, you know, and I'm trying and I'm telling you the truth of things. Whether you believe it or not, that's that's up to you. But I mean, try to help your fellow friends, your family and your fellow drivers. All right, folks. So that's it. That's all I got for you for this one. Thanks for listening. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, folks.